I'm interested in the relationship photography has to the real, especially the difference between a fixed image and the experience out of which it comes. Photographs for me initially were a way of guarding against loss, a way of holding a moment which is always past. Photographs and memory, I was interested in the way photographs held memory, especially the idea of what cannot be contained within the frame. Underpinning a lot of my work is the thing of desire or longing and loss, whether it's something that is felt or whether it's the left out or whether it's the thing that cannot be imaged or spoken about. Shooting Diana started as a kind of a chronicle or a document of my life in a way. Picnics at the beach or walking my dog at the park. And I started looking at these and I thought, well, maybe there was something interesting about family album photography. Our family albums or the records of our lives are about the sunny days. You know, nobody takes a photograph of themselves with a blade at their wrist. So part of the strategy was to produce images that had the look of home movies or family snapshots. What you had to do was reconstruct the narrative out of the bits and the fragments that you had left. If it was simply about my reading, I wouldn't have to make it at all. I mean, I could make these things and I could leave them in a studio until I rotted with them. But I need a particular engagement for that work to exist. The idea of open-endedness is an invitation to a viewer to complete that for me. Guess Who Loves You was a very particular body of work. I was quite struck by toys that my dog had. What happened to them, the way that they became chewed and destroyed, and quite violently so, but at the same time chewed through love, as it were. Sort of leftovers of love and affection, or part of something else that was whole. And then when looking at these images, separate from their context, what happened to them. It was important when I photographed them that they were huge, and disembodied, as it were. And it gets back to the notion of the everyday, or the notion of something that sits between the moments noticed, or the things that you take account of. Things that are perhaps ordinary can, in some ways, trigger something that is quite auspicious. The idea of making strange, they become not so much the content of everyday, they become almost surreal. I've always been interested in the relationship between image and text and it was only really when I started working with End of Time that I could do that, coming across these dead donkeys shot on the side of the road. And so I worked with Mike Nichol, him writing a text that in some ways was a forensic recreation of what might have happened with the shooting of the donkeys, but also using my accounts of finding them, newspaper clippings. It's supported by photographs that should be evidence and yet you have these quite repetitive, endless images of an inventory of the road. The narrative was the journey. To see that exhibition, you had to drive some 700 kilometers to New Bethesda. So that exhibition began from the moment you got in your car, and then you would get to the gallery and you would see similar images. So what happened was that you were thrown back on your experience of that journey. Journey and narrative are very much linked. And as much as my work is seen as non-narrative or denying narrative. Narrative is very much in my head when I make things. I actually wanted to make a film about love. The first image that I knew that I wanted was someone driving away or leaving. I didn't get the car, but I got the aeroplane wing, and that was the first image that I knew. I also knew I wanted an image of skin, of something that was bruised or wounding, something that could be erotic, but that could also be painful. The image of the dog digging up the sand, and there was something about the way she was digging and the hole filling up with water that seemed quite futile and quite painful to watch, especially when it was slowed down. The worm on the hook also came out by accident. We were going fishing and a friend of mine was threading a worm on the hook and I just loved the way her fingers got covered in blood. I wanted a bloody or a violent image, but that wasn't typical of the way we perceive violence here now. I think this work is a consolidatory work in its presentation, video and photography issues that I've been working with for quite some time. And in some ways I can see the threads of previous work, much more consolidated in terms of what I want from video. I suppose I wanted the work to be looked at in a similar way to the way you would look at a painting, that you stay as long as there's something interesting to read and then you move on.